What's going on, y'all? You know who it is. Mr. Warmack, a.k.a. Low Rent, a.k.a. The Ignorant American, a.k.a. The Truth As You Know It, a.k.a. Dirty Business, a.k.a. The Jet Jaguar of YouTube. All right, folks. This is uh, Mr. Warmack, and I'm back in the building, on, and I'm here to talk about some more social stuff that uh, you need to be aware of. And today I want to talk about I'm going to talk about this Section Ocho uh, welfare thing that's going on with Donald Trump again. Yes, I want to keep talking about it because I want to beat something in people's heads that this is real life. This is about to happen. We're like, once you get kicked off of this, is where are you going to? What are you going to do? What are your options? What what, what is your, what's your plan? And I would rather have you have a plan now than you, some people are they're now getting those letters like time to reconfigure your your uh, your situation. And a lot of you, I notice, a lot of you, like I said before, are living out there in the suburb. You're coming back to the hood, so just get ready. But today I want to talk about the reason why they are cutting these programs. And uh, I want to talk about the I want to talk about the hypocritical view that a lot of black people are saying this is all racially motivated. And I'll talk about that in the second part of the video. Now, the reason that a lot of these programs are getting cut. Or is because there's way too many people on these programs, and the pool of taxpayers have gotten small. It's shorter, small, how you want to call it. We've been in a recession for how long now? And the pool of taxpayers has been shrinking. But the rise of people on welfare and Section 8 programs or have been has been rising. Now, there are a lot of people on welfare and Section 8 who don't want to be on it. And, I'm, and I give credit to those people. Like, I made a video, like, five years ago about the new welfare cats. These are the people who've been laid off for work. And, like, I've heard horror stories. And by the grace of whoever you want to say, you know, say, who saved me, I was sort of good. Like I said, I, I was only laid, I laid off, like, for three months. But I heard horror stories about people who've been laid off for, like, three years. And remember when all these extensions were going on? I was, I, there, people were laid off. And, they, and what were you going to go after you get laid off for three years and you still can't find a job? You're going to hit the rolls of welfare in Section 8. Now, you add those people to the people that are already on it, plus the people that are on it that aren't doing shit, that are able-bodied, and what do you have? You have a you have a, you have have a a train wreck waiting to happen, and it all started about, i say, seven years ago. And then about, I made another video about five years ago. The first video, the video about, about the new welfare catch was seven years ago. The other video about five years ago was about how Newt Gingrich was letting you people know. And I, like, I, toured, I was going around the country and I heard this grumbling around an undercurrent. And it wasn't just white people. It was like all races. Newt Grant Gingrich had a point. And I made a video. Newt Gingrich said that black people should be asking for jobs. Which is which is true. Look what look what they did in Portland. They just had, what, what was it, Whole Foods or something like that? They, they didn't want the jobs... I understand to a point because they don't, they didn't want to gentrify the neighborhood probably, and they didn't want to change the neighborhood. But at the same time, you're bringing jobs into a neighborhood that probably needed jobs, which would help the would help the economy, help their base. But now back to this uh, Section Ocho and uh, welfare thing. We had a recession for about a decade or so, and like I said, we get all them people pushed on welfare. What does that do? That shrinks the tax base. And that shrinks the tax base. What happens? We shrink the tax base. That means that means that we have to borrow from. No, there's 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 two banking systems in the, in America. There's a federal banking system, and there's Social Security. And when we borrow, we can't borrow from the banking system. Our government goes to Social Security. And what they do for Social Security, and I told you this before, they write an IOU. They just say IOU. Reagan started this. Look this up. So they they've been borrowing from Social Security. So, but but uh, but before this fiasco, they they were getting their money back in the form of child support. That's why the reason why this child support thing was it wasn't to get their money back because of welfare. They've been doing welfare for how long? They were doing they, they were using child support as a means to get this payback Social Security because they were borrowing. They were double dipping. They were getting money from the they were borrowing from here and they were borrowing from the Social Security. So they were paying back Social Security. But the government. Looked at it this way, and I explained. I explained it. I explained about the, with the taxpayers. If if the taxpayer base is shrinking, and now you're paying more, 
in um, payments, that's a recipe for disaster. That's a recipe for defaulting by the taxpayers or bankrupting the taxpayers. Instead of doing that, you have to cut the programs. And I think, like I said, if you're an able-bodied woman with kids, this isn't your time. It's the, you're lazy. And what's going to happen is, you dads out there, this is the time to strike. The best time to hit somebody is while they're down. Go to court and get your kids. Show them pic Look, Facebook can be used against you in the court of law. Go in court and say, look at her Facebook. How, how, how these chicks on Section 8 can drink all day and party every day. But all of a sudden, they go to court, they're, they're like a babe in the woods. Get your kids. This is the perfect time. If I, if, if I pay child support, it's, I'm rejoicing now because now it's showing proof for a lot of these chicks that ain't doing shit. But the fact of the matter remains is, like I said before, that people understand, they said, you're cutting, they had to cut. The cuts were coming from somewhere. If the tax base is shrinking in America... I mean, we should make immigrants pay. I know there's a lot of groups that don't pay them seven, five-year deals. They should, but they're not. So if you got if you got a shrinking tax base, you want to pile more bills on me to satisfy a lot of people who we know that ain't working? Now, I can see the elderly and I can see the disabled. That's one thing. And the veterans. But if you got able-bodied women who can't work, whose fault's that? You don't want to work. As many programs out there to find a babysitter and you get money for it, nah. So, the reason why they're cutting these programs is the tax base got smaller and more and more people went on the rolls. So, now they're going to cut them off. Now, if, like, like the largest percent of people on Section 8 is, is single women with kids. There's no reason why they can't, they should be on there like that. I mean, they lead by double digits. They can work. They don't want to. They're lazy. But that's the way Democrats set them up for you guys to do that. But, uh, so, the, it's better to cut the programs then raise my taxes for your funky asses to sit around all day. Now, here's why, here's another problem. If I was a, oh boy, I don't know how to, you know, I don't want to come off like I'm, I'm being mean because people are going to say, well, you're being mean, this type of thing. No, I'm not being mean, but I'm going to explain something to you. Remember all these Democratic politicians are saying how Trump's doing it and it, all these cuts he's doing is racially motivated but at the same time we discuss all this black people are quick to, quick to say that more white people were on welfare than black people now which which way do you want it is it more white people or on welfare than black people or is it racially motivated you can't have your cake and eat it too I mean I know it's what you want but you can't have it that way the fact of the matter is, the Democrats have, have really kept, they haven't kept good books, if you want to say. And I'm going to say the Republicans, too, because this just didn't just happen. The problem is we had the usual politicians in there, and it took a businessman to come in there. And like I said, nobody's complaining about, the, and I try to tell a lot of women, or a lot of people who are able-bodied in general, if you're able-bodied, the taxpayers aren't going to feel sorry for you. You know why? A lot of these people are losing jobs. A lot of people, their money has gone down, and they're, they're losing money. So why should why should I feel sorry for you when you didn't even attempt to work and my money, and I'm paying for you not to do anything? I mean, it's just it's just to me, it's just a shame people don't understand it, and like and like people don't realize Trump is not playing. You know, the pool, like I said, the pool of money has shrunk for decades. The payments have been consistent. Now it's you know you know who has to step up it's these churches who take your money, you know they got to step up and help out or it's one of them cases where it's welcome to the terror dome. I mean, it's just a shame, man. It's just like people don't want to really, and a lot of it is like, uh, and a lot of it is people just don't want to realize that they're responsible. Also, you're responsible for your own life, and like the diff the difference I saw, like I used to be a, a Democrat, cause like I said. I don't I was born in New York, Brooklyn, and I grew up in um near Pittsburgh, and both Demo heavily Democrat areas. Matter of fact, it's mostly Union. I moved out here to Columbus, two thousand and I want to say 2000, 2000, 2001, one of them deals for for good. And once I moved out here, 
I started my business in 2000. I, I was separated, so I started my business when I separ- after my separation in like 2006, I want to say. And when I and that's when I made like that's when we all had the quote like back home there's a quote. Back in the Pittsburgh area, we had a lot of guys who went to the NFL, and we always would say, "Once you make a little bit of money, you all go Republican." Well, I went Republican, <laughs> and I'm I'm no means no rich guy. Let me let me say that right now. I'm no I'm not like I said. I if I quit my job, I just have the safety of a backup. You know what I mean? But the fact remains is. You, the Republicans more want you to carry your own load, whereas the Democrats will will want you to depend on the government for everything. And it's that dependency on the government where put us where we're at now. So a lot of you women, and there's guys on there too, so let me, let me pay perfectly clear. What they're going to do, they're going to cut now they're gonna cut the fat. They're going to go by able-bodied men that are on welfare in Section 8. Then they're going to go hit the able-bodied women and they're going, it's, 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 it's time. Or, like I said, welcome to the Terror Dome. I mean, there's, we can make FEMA camps any sizes, you know, FEMA tents, all shapes and colors. So, uh, I hope it doesn't come to that, but uh, I hope you guys are being aware because don't let, don't let it come at the last minute because they're not playing. So, have a good one. Peace.